All right, so how you doing? This is gonna be a Logic Pro Masterclass for beginners. I'm gonna cover a lot of really cool stuff in this video. It's kind of a video where you kind of just sit back and watch it once all the way through. Then you probably have a lot of questions, but you can also get a lot of inspiration and ideas on how to use the program. It's basically an overview of a lot of really cool features in Logic that you can get going with. And we're gonna cover everything from, you know, the song templates here, to selecting your instruments, uh, drummers. We go a lot of, about the drummers here, software instruments. We actually record some guitar later on, some uh, just vocal channel strips. We go over those a little bit. All kind of really cool stuff. We go over all you know all these features up here, and you know all the different things you could do to customize this and how, your workflow and stuff like that. Go into the software instrument library, uh, Apple Loops. A lot of cool stuff on the Apple Loops to get you going, sample library and stuff like that. Bouncing MIDI tracks to audio tracks, customizing your controls and stuff like that as well. We go into the Apple Loop library, selecting different uh, genres and songs and loops and stuff like that. Take a look at the sample instruments in the sample library. We're gonna look at the smart controls, how you can just use one knob to control multiple knobs on certain effects like this one here. We're gonna take a look at a lot of the drummers here and how the drummer track works and how you can you know, create your own beats and stuff like that. Really cool stuff. So this is basically just a beginner overview of Logic Pro. And there is a timestamp in the video below as well, but I do recommend watching the video all the way through because sometimes I talk about stuff that was mentioned in previous sections of the video. So it will make more sense if you just watch it all the way through at first, and then you can go back and look at different sections if you want to. And if you have questions, please leave them down in the comments below. All right, so let's just begin. So when you open Logic, it looks like this. So we have an empty project. We have our recent ones here. We have demo products. This one's Beck. I believe the newer version of Logic has a, a what's her name? I forget her name right now, <laughs> but one of our songs. Uh, you can create your own templates and you have project templates here. You can start with hip hop, electronic, songwriter, orchestral, music for picture, multi-track recording, um, live loops. I don't have the live loops in this version of Logic. This is an older version of Logic. I have an older computer that does not support the latest version of Logic. So, but there's a lot in Logic, so we're gonna be covering a lot in Logic and you know, you can look at the live loops somewhere else. So anyways, we also have these things here, these options for different tempos. You could tap the tempo. You can put your key signature in, you want a major key, minor key, time signature, and your sound card. Now, whatever device you're using, I'm using the uh, Scarlett 2i2 USB interface. Uh, so that one is selected, but I could choose other ones if I, I wanted to there. Um, and then we can, of course, go down here to open existing project as well. But for this purpose, we're gonna go to a new project. And by default, it's usually in a key of C, one, 20 uh, tempo 120 and you could tap a tempo in here if you want to if you know what you're going to be working on in this specific tempo and stuff but for right now we're going to keep everything the way it is here i'm going to choose that we, then we got this option um, software instruments we can start with the software instrument we start with audio we can start with a guitar and bass which is basically the same as the audio track but it, it presets, it pre uh, loads like guitar amps and bass amps and stuff over here. And I'll show you that in a second. And then we have a drummer track as well. And we have an external MIDI track. If you have any external MIDI devices that you wanna use. So, and also we have our output. This is our sound card again, uh, right here. I'll put Scarlett 2i2. And then when you, you can put the number of tracks that you want. So for now, let's just do a real quick, we'll start with the software instrument and we'll put, you know, four, just create, bam. Now over here, your, yours might look a little different than mine because I have had some custom stuff I did to it. And I'll show you how to customize your, uh, all your stuff up here, toolboxes and stuff like that. But just starting on the left here, we have this drawer thing, which is your uh, sound library which is very, you can just click that and get rid of it. There's a key command for it as well. There's key commands for like almost everything in Logic and I recommend getting to know all your key commands as much, as many as you can. I don't know all of them myself, but the ones you use quite frequently, I do. 
And then a really cool thing too is, especially if you're just starting off with logic, you could click on this little question mark thing here. And it kind of gives you like these, when you scroll around, you know, it's gonna say what every button does, every switch, you know, here's a pause button. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, but capture record. Uh, this is a feature I added on. I'll show you in a second. It's not a feature I added on, but it's in my display here, I added it on. And we have our tempo and stuff like that, time signature. So this is a really cool, helpful hand, you know, tips and stuff like that. So you can just scroll around and look around. It'll drive you crazy if you leave it on all the time, but you can just click it off right there. Now next over here, we have this, which is really good too. This comes in very handy because we have all these additional tools down here that you're gonna be using throughout your workflow. Um, really cool stuff. For example, here, let's just go over here and write in a little MIDI track. It's obviously empty, there's no MIDI information in there. But if I click on that, I could just do a track zoom. And of course it's doing this one because I have that one selected. Do a track zoom on that track or a group of tracks or whatever. Uh, note repeats, so on and so forth, split by playhead. So here's the playhead, maybe I want to split it right there. I could just use that quick command. Split by locators, that's if you have like a set, you could create a loop up here or something. Just, you just kind of click on it and you know stretch it out to where you want it to be. But let's say that's the locator, and you just split by the locators, that cuts it right there. And of course, I could just select all these and join them, which is really cool. And then bounce regions. This is a really cool feature when you're using like software instruments and stuff. If you want to bounce this to an audio track, um, see, you just do this. You could name the track, uh, new track, source. You're going to mute the source if you want. You could leave the source. You could delete it. You could by bypass the effect plugins. All these different options here. Uh, for those and it, it'll create an audio track of whatever you just created in your MIDI and then you can get rid of the MIDI thing and then just use the audio which is really cool and there's other ways to do it as well one thing about logic there's so many different ways to to, to like balance the audio or anything features like I can right click here and there's a place you know bounce in place it's the same feature just located somewhere else um, another cool thing here we got the move to playheads thing let's say like I want to move this data to bar 11. I just have the playheads on bar 11. I just say move to playhead, bam. Um, and then there's a nudge thing here for the bars. Repeat section. Does that cut section, insert section, so on and so forth. You'd have to have something like, let's say this. You have that selected, repeat that section, repeat that section. And then you want to cut the section, it'll cut this one right here because that's the one that's highlighted. Let's say I want to move, cut that section. And it moves that one over. Um, and so insert section, if you want to insert a section here, uh, that's by the where the bar is or the transport bar. And so on and forth, so forth, insert silence. Select locators, zoom, another cool, you know, zoom again. You know, if you want to zoom in on that. And of course we have colors over here as well, which is cool. If you want to color code stuff, different information, which comes in handy. So all your tracks don't look the same. Um, so let's move on. We'll get that out of the way. Let's go back over here. And then we have this box here as well. This is for your controls for your instruments. We'll show, I'll show you that a little bit in a second because there's no, there's no instrument uh, loaded up at the moment. We have a mixer thing here. And again, this is these are all key commands too. X is, works too. If you hit the X, you get the mixer. You get the B, you get the controls as well. And then we have a cut tool and all these other, you know, our, our transport bar, pause and all that stuff. And over here we have our um, tempo and stuff and by the way let me go back here real quick if you want to customize this you just kind of highlight over it and do a right click customize toolbar and you could put all these different other features in there 
by default it is a certain way and then you can set it as default as well so every time you load logic it's going to be that's going to be your default that's why yours might look a little different than mine at the moment all right so let's move on and you can do that up here as well customize control bar and display same kind of thing i could change this around i could get rid of the tempo if i want to um all kind of really cool stuff and again save as default which i have some certain things i like in my display up here like i like to have the end bar like for example this is the end where the end song of the ends um i like to have the tempo the key you know you might be wondering why would i want the key up here um one thing about logic you use apple loops is that they're going to put the uh, um the loop into, into the key of your song and sometimes you know that that's this very helpful if you're just doing recording your audio and stuff you know i still do it anyways just for transposing midi and stuff like that as well um if you know this like if you're starting from scratch you know you'll figure it out if you, if you know what song your key's in they just you know you, just, you can just change that by clicking on this to whatever you want to do i'm just going to leave it in c major for now and then we have a midi in and out i'm hitting my keyboard right now it's telling me the notes which is really cool too like that's a chord i'm playing it's, it's telling you i'm playing a c major chord uh c major seventh chord let's do a c you know it's that's pretty cool too c minor um so that's pretty cool as well and then over here we have some other you know features count in uh you can click this on to click while recording for your metrodome settings you could change the sound and everything uh, you could solo parts of a song all kind of really cool stuff you know i'm just kind of giving you an overview here it's just really in depth you know this program and then over here we have our events now these these would be like mini information actually let me just throw some load an instrument up here and throw some stuff in here All right, so that's just something I did randomly. And then over here, you have all your notes. So if you want to go in there and edit stuff, I, did, I typically don't ever edit notes here, but sometimes um, pitch changes and controller, it was all kind of information over here. Yeah, just your MIDI information. And then we have, you could edit there, you got just functions. You know, if you have muted notes, you could turn them off, tr transpose MIDI, all kind of really cool stuff. And then moving over from there, we have uh, markers. Now, I don't have any markers in the song at the moment, but we could go over here and put, put this thing here, that little button right there. We have an arrangement, we have markers, we have the signature, the key, the tempo. So if you wanna change keys in a song, if you wanna change tempo in a song, that's all kind of mapped out here. Now, the markers, you just kind of throw in there and so now marker one is just this four bars. Now this is a little different than arrangement. Arrangement is something a little different here. It could give you like an intro, a verse. Uh, this is where the colors come in handy too. So you could mark these markers with different colors. You know, you could come up with your own little whatever. Um, a cool thing about the arrangement too I'll show you in a second when you load a drummer track if you have a full arrangement busted out here it's going to completely just load a whole drummer track with your arrangement um so they for options they have an intro obviously you can make this shorter maybe you want a four bar intro just kind of drag it over there and then your verse is eight bars long and you can change these here intro chorus bridge outro i don't know why they don't have a pre-chorus in here but you could rename these as well and let's just change the color of that. And there we go. So back over here, we have the marker. Now we have the marker length and stuff like that. So if you wanna, you know, bounce around with those. And then we have our tempo. Typically, you know, most songs are the same tempo, but if you wanna have a song with multiple tempos, you can have a tempo map over here and you can change the tempo at different places. You could add a new tempo in at, you know, right here, fifth bar, which is where I'm at. But, and then you can just select that and delete that, which I'm gonna do. 
And then we have our key signature and stuff that you could change over here as well. Maybe you want to key change at bar five. You could just do that. You could number of beats, key change and tempo, so on and so forth. But we're going to delete that as well. All right, so next up, we got the loop browser over here. Logic comes with, you know, thousands and thousands of samples and thousands and thousands of loops that you could use. There's third party loops you can buy. Um, when you first get Logic, it doesn't come with all the sounds. There's something over here called your sound library. You could scroll over here. I have everything downloaded. But if you don't have it downloaded, you know, and sometimes they release new sounds and stuff. So you can just click on these and you can download them and install them on your computer. And by the way, there's a default location they do install them to. But if you want to change that, that'll be a different video or, or maybe later in this video. You know, a lot of people like to put their sample libraries on different hard drives, especially if you have a laptop and you have limited space, because this does take up a lot, a lot of space. So that's another cool thing. But let's take a look at the uh, the loops and stuff like that. So we have, we could select by instrument. We could select by genre, uh, descriptions. Maybe you want a chair full, you know, something. And then you have your favorites over here. But you could create your favorites as you're browsing through. And also over here we have loop packs. Um, there's third party brands out there, and Apple has theirs neatly organized as well. Now, I've been using Logic a long time, so I have, I have the older jam packs that they used to use, um, which I believe are just, they might be listed a little bit differently than what you see here. But you probably, I know you have all those sounds. But anyways, so a few ways you can browse through here. And you can do it this way too. Genre, instruments. But back to here is what we're going to do. Now... I could find, let's go by instrument. Maybe we want to, uh, a keyboard part or something like that, piano of some sort. And we got all these Apple loops over here. Now this is from all the packs. If I want just, you know, the chill wave or the deep house, I could select that as well. Now there's green ones and there's blue ones. The blue ones are audio files and the green ones are actual MIDI files that are associated with an instrument, like I'll show you here in a second. And they have the number of beats here, and they have the tempo of the default tempo of the loops in, and the key that it's in. Now, the cool thing about the Apple loops, especially the MIDI ones, they work at every tempo. The, the key changes to the key of your song, um, and all that fun stuff. The the, the, the Audio ones, they, they do work at all tempos, but the time stretching sometimes sounds kind of weird. Sometimes it's a cool effect. Like for example, this one's like in the key of E originally at 110. So if we play it, see that doesn't sound too bad because it's still, it's time stretched to the key of C and time stretched down to a, a faster tempo because I'm playing at 120. And we just drag those over here like so, and it's in your track. Now, another thing you're gonna notice here, is we have this little thing here, because a lot of the Apple loops have, you know, 70s rock, piano one, 70s rock, piano two, 73, and so on and so forth. Not all of them do, but a lot of them do. And you can absolutely check, change that from over here as well, which is a really cool feature. Now, I'm gonna meet my original piano, because it probably doesn't go with this piano I recorded. And we're gonna loop that couple bars there and the cool thing about the loop browser as well is when you're playing the piano with the track you can browse for other loops and it, you could audition them let's so let's go over here we're going to click that x maybe we want a uh, bass to go with this so we're going to go to our bases and let's do a midi one this time well we can just search through these Okay, that doesn't go with it too well, but there's a volume thing down here and we could actually audition them in the song key, which is obviously that's by default and what you should be doing because that's the song key. You know, it's gonna fit with the key of the song, but you could change them as well. But 
let me try to find one that fits this piano part just for this demo. Okay, like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. All right, so that one sounds pretty cool. We'll drag that over here. And now this one being an instrument track, we have a complete instrument over here of the Liverpool bass, which is a patch and logic sound library. And you'll notice some controls down here popped up and I'll sh we'll go over that in a minute or two. And again, we can change these. We could audition different ones. And the cool thing about the mini ones, say I want to try a fretless bass on that instead, I could just change the patch over here. Progressive rock bass. And the list goes on. I could even do electric basses and stuff like that. But, you know. Okay, so this is not obviously a great track, but I'm just kind of showing you some of the cool, cool stuff. So that's the loop browser. Um, there's a lot, a lot of stuff in here. It's there's lots and lots and lots of sounds. I mean, you could just go on for, you know, ever searching through these. And there, like I said, there are a lot of third party software out there that you can, you could find to use. And we also have a search browser here too. Say you want to find something. Um, let's just go back here. Rain. Let's just say you want a rain track. Now they do have sound effects in here as well. Now some of the beats and some of the files are actually named rain, like rainforest house beat. And again, I could audition that with the track. Obviously everything doesn't fit together. But here's some sound effects ones. So pretty cool with the search feature and everything. And of course you could pick by scale, you could pick by time signature, so on and so forth. And if you do want a favorite one of these, say you like that rain sound, you could just select that. And then when you go to your favorites, it's gonna pop up over there. Of course, that's for search for rain, all my different favorite ones. So a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff with the loop browser. And then over here we have our audio files that are in the project, which right now is just the seventies rock piano because the MIDI data is separate and anything we record will be over here as well. We can add audio files. We can go to media, we can search our computer, uh, all files and all kind of stuff like that. So that is really cool. Let's close that out. Let's go over here and get rid of this. And let's um, let's check out over here now. We have the instruments. So right now we just loaded up that rock bass, progressive rock bass part. And being, that being MIDI, we could even change the pattern if we want. That's an Apple loop. Change the bass sound. Now, just while we're here on this sound, here's another really cool feature that we can play around with. If you tap, if you have your instrument selected here, which we have the bass selected, a couple things we can do. We can click on this, double click on this, and we're gonna get the MIDI data down here if we need to edit anything. And this goes for when you record your own MIDI parts as well. You could do your quantization here. You could just strength the quantization. Let's say you went a little bit looser. Uh, so you could add swing to it. You can change the scale, um, the key, if you will, the velocity of all the notes. You just come down here and select all or just one note if you want to select, like you could check the velocity of each note. Maybe that note's too loud or too soft. You could adjust it here. You can also come over here and select your velocity tool. 
but all right, I won't get too far into this. So that's where some MIDI stuff can be edited, which is really cool. But also you have these really nice controls. They're called smart controls in Logic. You can hit the uh, either B on your keyboard, and these are going to pop up. Now you have the the, the um, different th options here, and you have an EQ over here as well. You can also hit, uh, I believe it's Control 3, and that, you get a pop-up menu of it as well. But right now, we just, use, we just use it down here. Now, every instrument is going to have its own different controls. These are built into Logic, which are really cool. It saves a lot of time, especially if you're a beginner. Um, because basically, over here, we have a what's called a channel strip. And this is a, a audio instrument channel strip uh, for the bass guitar right now. And we have a lot of things going on. We have the EXS24 sampler, which is the bass guitar sound. And then we have a bass amp which is the built-in Logic Bass Amp. We have the compressor. We have a chorus, um, and so on and so forth. Echo, which is not turned on, and we have an EQ. And by the way, if you want to turn them on, there's a little switch over here, if you want to do that. And if you want to change it, you have all your different plugins over here as well, which I'm not going to go into at the moment, but that's where you do that as well. And then we have sends, which this one doesn't have any sends. This is for you know for different bus settings and stuff like that. We'll go into that later. But I just want to show you the smart controls right now for this bass, for example. So I'm just going to play the bass. We have a tone control here. We have a boost. Compressor chorus effect we have a delay and we have our EQ over here as well if we want to do any EQ adjustments now what these are doing for example I'm gonna open the compressor here while I'm playing the compressor or while I'm playing the bass when I change the compressor down here you can see these two different knobs moving at the same time. That's what they're called smart controls. It, you know, they figured out a lot of the production techniques and stuff like that for you. So you just know you want a little bit more compressor. It kind of just does it, the settings for this particular instrument, which is really cool. So if we go over to like something like a synthesizer, let's select a different instrument here over here. Um, and play that same MIDI part. Let's see here. Let's get a lead part playing that. Epic hook synth, we'll load that. See, now I just completely loaded a different sample patch here, which this one only has the alchemy in it, which is a synthesizer built in to Logic. But we still have the same controls down here. Now you notice if we open up the, the plugin itself, this this is where those controls are. What we're, what we're controlling in the smart controls. And then there's some more controls over here that we control as well. Again, you could go in here and fine tune all this stuff as well. You don't have to use the smart controls, but it's just, it's very easy way to use it. So that's a little low for that. So it's, if we wanted a hook. So another thing we could do with it, many instruments over here, first of all, we can mute that. We can loop it, have the quantize on and off, swing, transpose it up or down. So we're gonna transpose it up Let's just do a whole octave here. Do it two octaves. And there's a bunch of other settings in here as well. We're not going to go over all of these. But it's really cool with these different controls here. And one thing about the Alchemy synth is they have all these. You can change the sound very easily. Watch this. Kind of like that one, very short. Get some more reverb on it, some delay. Other controls here we got detuning, cut off. So it's pretty cool. We have a final EQ here if we want to do some EQ adjustments for the mix. 
So it's pretty cool. The smart controls make a lot of things easy, if you will. Now, another thing we could do with the channel strip over here, see this little, this blue little arrow kind of thing, triangle kind of thing. I can change this whole patch just from there. Now I'm changing it to this. A different different patch in the lead section. And then we got the festival lead. Now these are all, like I said, built into Logic. So we just changed the whole synthesizer to the ES2 with different you know channel strips here. And we, and we have bus sends and stuff like that. So our controls are a little, little different for this one. They changed with the instrument. So we got that sound, we can throw some ambience on here. Now, if you notice when I changed the reverb here and the ambience, those, these are the bus sends I was talking about. And if you click on these, they pop up right over here if you want to control them. You can click on this one as well, and then you get this one. They're completely different settings. But you notice these little knobs here, when I change them down here, they change. So let's say, you know, Turn them down a little bit, and play the sound. And same thing, but we got this grid here. I don't know what that's controlling. I think that's probably controlling something in the ES2. Hmm. Yeah, it's controlling the filter right here. Watch, so if you watch that, why I change the grid, that filter is moving. So it's really, really cool feature built into Logic. You know, when you're just doing stuff, you want to throw some verb on, or you want to do this, dirty up the sound, whatever. It's really, really cool. And like I said, they're all different. You know, if you go onto a, you know, let's go over here. Let's get out of the synth section. Say you're in mallets, vibes, and basses. I don't know. You got completely different controls for that instrument itself. Some tremolo, delay. So yeah, really, really cool. All right, let's move on. I spent a lot of time on that. So our sound library over here, which is, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of built-in virtual instruments and stuff into Logic. A lot, a lot, of, lots. You know, let's say we're looking for a piano sound. Or let me go back here. So I have user patches. I've made a bunch of my own. Different settings that I use a lot. But we have basses. We have drum kits. We have electronic drum kits, we have guitar, we have mallet, a oh, bunch of stuff. And then I have some legacy stuff here for my older jam packs and stuff like that, which is probably built into your version of Logic somewhere along the way, because um, they, they change stuff. So these songs, these might be at different locations, but you could do a search. So let's just find like a piano or some sort. You know, let's just load this one up. Oh, I deleted the MIDI file. So we got this MIDI file over here that I got from the other song. So yeah, you could just select any of these different pianos. Um, let's take a look at the drummer because that's a really cool thing. I'm gonna actually gonna go over here. I'm gonna put a new, get rid of this piano part. Close this up over here basically start a whole new track if I will and by the way you could delete these two if like I'm gonna get rid of that piano just hit delete bam it's gone these are gone those are gone let's go back to our Apple loops and find a nice piano sound that we could work with Make something sound really nice and musical here so that sounds pretty nice and we could just drag that over we got that we'll loop it for now I'm gonna slow the tempo down. Maybe 90 beats per minute. Okay, cool. So that's a nice electric piano sound. And by the way, like this again, you can change those. We'll, we go audition different ones. But let's add a drummer track to this. We just go over here, click that. Now the drummer is really crazy too. There's so much going on with these drummers. We have different genres. We got rock, we got alternative, we got songwriter, we got R and B, we got hip hop, or electronic and hip hop, and then percussion sets as well. So for this one, I'm gonna select the R and B, and just gonna create. And within 
the R and B section, we have three drummers for the R and B, and you can select different drummers. You can select different drum kits. Um, you can go, you know, check out. There's a songwriter drum kits. There's a lot alternative, you know, all kind of different stuff going on here. But let's go back to the R and B. Now, I did put in the verse, the intro and verse thing. That's why. It's, that's why when I did this. I'll go back up here when I put those intro and verse parts in it generated a drum track for an intro and a verse now if you don't have that created it'll just give you like an 8 bar default to start off with and then you can also click on this and it gives you another 8 bars or whatever but for now let's just work with this loop here that I got going on we'll actually get rid of that and the cool thing about the drummer is when you click on this little information here, you can change the sounds of or the patterns and stuff. Let's just play it. Okay, that's kind of a nice little intro pattern. That is one nice thing too when you generate intro verse and stuff because it kind of gives you like um, intros and it verses. It kind of figures things out, which is really cool. I'm just going to loop this pattern. Actually, let me loop it this way. I'm just hitting the L. Once you have a mini part selected, you can hit L and just and it loops it indefinitely. And then you can come over here and do it like that. Um, also with loops here, you can that's uh, turn loops to real copy, converge loops to regions. So now I have the same pattern here. But anyways, that's just another quick tip. But let's just loop this eight bar pattern now. Double-click on the drummer. Okay, that's that's pretty nice as it is right now. But just to demonstrate some of the drummer stuff, we could change it to a ride cymbal. We have different patterns for the ride. We have a swing setting here. How intense the fills are. Kind of like that ride pattern too. We could add in some tambourine. And there's different patterns. We can do tom toms. Let's go back to the hi hat. And we have different kick and snare patterns. And we can also do a half time, we could do a double time, we could do a follow a certain track. So right now the kick and snare is pretty much following the, the piano part. Great for bass tracks too, obviously. And we have more details down here. We could push the fill, pull the fill, ghost notes, less or more. Not really too many ghost notes in this because it's the room click thing, but uh, different things for the hi hat. A lot of fine fine tuning. Now we can make the drum part louder. We can make it more complex. Turn the fall off and put the. We can go over here and make it a little simpler, a little quieter. Kind of just juggle around till you find something you like. There's also presets over here. It's flow. So that's pretty nice. We'll leave it there. Now, let's go back up here. So that's just one of the drummers. And we can switch the drummers. That's Rose right now playing. If we change the drummer, we're going to have a completely different um, feel and things going on like that. So if like if we put a hard rock drum on there, obviously it's gonna be a lot different. I, you know, it would go with the keyboard, but not as it won't be that smooth vibe. It'd be more of an aggressive vibe, if you will. But we can also change the drum sounds, which is really cool. So we go to the drum kit here. And we have all these different drum kits. Now we could change this to an electronic drum kit too, but let's just go through some of the acoustic kits. 
This is the default one that Rose plays. And by the way, we could open up the drum kit here and it's gonna show you. You could do some fine adjustments, dampening of the toms, tune of the toms. Same with the snare, we could change the snare. Kick drum, we could change the kick drum. Um, so yeah, so really cool stuff here. And there are producer kits too, which is, which is where they, you basically get a whole like you could mix the kit like crazy. I'll I'll show you that in later. But, um, so again, we have our whole channel strip right here. We have the EQ compressor. We, have, we actually have a pedal board on this one, which is a guitar pedal board for guitar amps and stuff like that. But just with some EQ and some happy face fuzz on it. And then we have a limiter. And let's go back here and we can click that, that B smart control thing. And we have volume of kick snare toms, percussion. We have compressor, which we have some drive and some room. So if we play it, add some compression all the way up. We got um, a lot of reverb here for the room effects. But anyways, let's go back to changing the drum kit. So if we come over here, I have this where it says drum kit selected and then all these drum kits pop up over here. I just change the kit. Sometimes it takes a while to load. We can change it to Bluebird kit. Brooklyn kit. up here so that's pretty cool I mean we got a lot here we could even change it to like I said an electronic kit since we got that beat um, one thing also about the drummer if you notice these do look like mini files but they're not mini files but we can turn them into mini files um, so if you like that beat, you could lock that in. Uh, another really cool feature about not just the drummer, but all of your uh, MIDI instruments and audio, we can do this over here. See these little up and down. You might have to turn this feature on. And by the way, you can go over here and track harder components. You can turn different things on and off. Like I said, mine might look a little different than yours because I customized mine a while back. So we could go over here and put new. We could duplicate that part. We could rename it. We could, we could do new. And then it's just going to give us a whole new MIDI track here that we could play around with. But we don't get rid of that one. If we go back to A, we have the A part. We have a B section. And we could rename these. So if you want like demo one, demo two, whatever. Because maybe you want to change the drums. Maybe you want a different bass line. You know, it goes on and on and on. So there's other some cool features there within the uh, tracks over here. So we're gonna come back over here where it says slow jam. We're gonna put that, select that instrument there, which is the ch top of the channel strip setting. And we go to our electronic drum kits and we could pick pretty much, you know, test them out, different kits and stuff like that. So now we have Rose, the modern R&B drummer, playing this electronic kit. Sometimes toms and stuff and fills get a little messed up with these kind of things, but it's another option that you can do with drummer. It's pretty cool. So actually, let's go here, create B, and just for fun, let me um, choose a different drummer to give you an example of what happens. We'll put the Benny here. So now we just created a whole different drummer who's gonna be playing different patterns and stuff. It's kind of similar, but. Let's go to like a singer songwriter drummer. Get like a, a brush kit, roots, root, roots brushes.
So, I mean, you could just go on for endlessly, you know. Maybe you want some ride symbol. Adjust the fills to the maximum. I mean, they'll probably still be mellow in this kit. It's still the maximum fills for this kit and this drummer. So yeah, really, really cool. We got pop brushes. It just, like I said, it's endless. You could just sit here all day and do this stuff. All right, so let's take a look at more of what drummer can do. I changed the, the beat here, or the sound again to different drummer. But let's say we're in here. Go back to our controls here. Add some verb, tone. We go back into the kit. Maybe we want to adjust that snare a little bit. Change the snare. Get the tone of it here. Dampen it. So we'll just kind of leave it like that for the moment, but let's just throw in a percussion track. We got a lot of cool percuss percussionists in here as well. And we can just like this here, percussion. So now we got another drummer playing percussion. Same kind of deal, but we got all kinds of different instruments to play with here. Let's make it a little simpler. Some cowbell, triangle. We'll go full out just to see how much stuff we can do. So yeah, you could just mess around with this for like ever if you want to. <laughs> but actually, we're just gonna delete that track for now. And let's show you some more of what the sample library is over here. Uh, enough of this piano stuff for now. We'll just create another track. So again, we have all these different things over here. We can search for different instruments. We can go through them here. We got a Mellotron, we got World Instruments, we got electric pianos, claw bass, a bunch of synthesizer stuff, studio strings, studio horns. These are really, really cool as well. Now, one thing I didn't show you here yet. Did that load? Oh, I put it on the wrong channel. So you can undo that. Let's say I messed up there. Go back to the piano. We're going to mute the piano for now anyways. So let's go back to these studio. Let's go do horns. Do a seven piece section. And all of a sudden we have this horn section here. Now again with the smart controls on this one. We have key switches, which you can play this on your MIDI keyboard as well. Or click on the mouse. So yeah, really cool stuff. 
And if you notice here too, this one and with the electric piano, I should have showed you the piano one. We have all these different, um, like a pull down menu here, which is another really cool feature of Logic where you can mute different instruments if you want. Right now the trumpets are playing. And these are called track stacks, which are really cool because you have the main channel right here. So if you're in your mixer, you have this as like the, the bus of all these instruments together. You can close it out there. Then you have all these instruments within there as well. And that's another thing I didn't show you in the drummer with the, with, where the drummers have um, these things as well. They're called the studio kits where the drummers bust out. Actually, let me go back and show you that just real quick. I won't have to play any of them. So I'm, I'm in my drum kits here. And right now, I said studio kits, but they're actually called producer kits. Right now, it's just like a stereo channel. And you'll see that there's no extra deals up here. But we're in the Motown Revisited Kits. We go to Producer Kits. And select that same kit. And now we have control over every like instrument. Just like if you would in a real studio if you recorded a drum kit. So if we're playing just that. And of course in the mixer, now we have, this is just the, without it. But now we have all these different controls here. There's not much on these kit, this kit itself. There's like top snare has like distortion on it. That's just the snare. So you can get really crazy with this when mixing your drums and stuff like that. It does take up more CPU power. So that's why they have both kits here. So if you know if you don't want to do that, or if you want to, you know arrange your song and everything before you do that you could just use the regular kit instead of the, the the you know the producer kit so that's pretty cool and these are this is basically a track stack if you will but you can do this with instruments too and actually it's done on the keyboard here if i play this extra piano we were playing before we got like the bell and the different sound for the bell and different sound for the body so that's just the body sound Although it sounds exactly the same for some reason. There we go. Add the bell back in. So yeah, there's, you know, endless tweaking knobs and stuff in here if you want to get into all involved in all that. But you can also create these too. Like let's say, for example, you're in Logic. Let's say you have a, um, a couple of instruments five i do this all the time it's a great feature let's see you have a bunch of different drums like a kick drum here a snare hi-hat whatever you have you can select all of these and then just do a control shift d and we have a, a summing stack and you can create that and then you just basically have the same thing obviously these are empty instruments but that's how it works and it's really cool and if you want to take parts out of there you can drag it out as well so pretty cool all right so what are we gonna do now I guess we'll talk about doing some audio recording and stuff like that all right so first I'm actually gonna throw down a drummer real quick so we can have something to play to let's just do like an all turn to track or something we'll just do that for now we'll loop it now we do have an audio track here but I'm just gonna go over here and we'll go to guitar and bass I'm gonna select my input to two on my audio interface because that's where my guitar is going into and of course the output everything stays the same we're just gonna create that we do have so that's like a default amp that just loads up. All right, so I got my guitar uh, plugged in here, but you know this is no sound. So we have a few things here. We have this input recording that's gonna um, play the sound. You'll be able to hear the sound, I mean.
turn that off. You're not gonna hear it at all. But so really cool here. I mean, right out of the box, that's a pretty nice clean sound, as it's called, a Brit and clean. And again, these are channel strips. And the same way with the audio or the MIDI instruments, we have these audio effects now pulling through. through. And some of them are the same. We, we have a noise gate and stuff like that. But we also have addition of a pedal board, which was actually used on, uh, I forget, one of those drum tracks too. And this is just a preset set built right into Logic. So it's, uh, these are actually turned off at the moment, but if I wanna like, so for example, do a treble boost on here. Throw a compressor on. And there's like, you know, a zillion other effects, guitar pedal effects over here as well that you can throw on. But I'm not gonna get into all that at the moment. I'll turn that high boost off. And we have a bunch of stuff over here. And again, we have the smart controls too that we can mess around with. So you just click that and there we go. That would be the B control on your keyboard. And then we have all this other information here. And we have a, the EQ of course as well but we have, you know, the amp and stuff. Let's maybe see if we want some distortion. I believe that's the pedal we just had on. And we can do some reverb, more reverb. Dial that back, we got the delay echo. And of course, over here, we have like, I don't even know how many presets. We got clean guitar, we got crunch guitar, distorted guitar, experimental, experimental guitar, and then we got bass and so on and so forth. So we got all kind of sounds here to mess around with. Right now, let's just use the default one since it's here. What's that drum beat sound like? So we'll do something like that. And I'm just gonna, by the way, I just hit zero on my keyboard. It goes back to the beginning. So we're just gonna hit record to count in. So now we've got to record, record a guitar part. And again, I'm just doing this stuff pretty fairly quickly. We could go in later and, and add bass and stuff like that. Uh, vocals, there's a lot of vocal chain paths too here. Presets for your vocals. So let's see here. Check, one, two. Except the input, we got to change the input here. Check one, two, check one, two. Classic, Classic vocal. vocal. Compressed vocal. Dance vocal. Edge vocal. Fuzz vocal. And of course you can um, basically change these sounds after the fact as well. I'm just gonna mute this. And get back to my normal voice here, but one cool thing about all this too. Well, another cool thing I should say. So we got the guitar. We can go like that might sound nice with some clean delay or clean echoes. Like, so we basically without all the effects here, by the way, you can turn these off like that too. That's just the direct signal in for my sound card. 
doesn't sound that great. So we can turn on the amps and pedals. So yeah, and of course, all kind of third-party plugins you could use as well. I got a ton of them myself, but I'm just showing you the logic ones for the moment. All right. So that's like a basic recording thing here. Another thing, again, re recording instruments, I could just do that. I can also do a loop record thing, which I'm not going to get into here. We basically loop a bunch of different takes and you could edit them together. We'll save that for another tutorial. All right, so that's the end of uh, this tutorial here, this quick overview and stuff like that. There's a, obviously a lot you can do in Logic. There's so many stuff you can do, and it's hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave, the com leave in the comments below. And I'm going to have a bunch of other videos on Logic Pro, and I have a bunch of older videos in my, my back catalog here as well, so you can check those out as well. But if there's any things specific that you want to learn, please put them in the comments below. And I'll try to make videos on those specific topics. Um, yeah, so. All right. Very cool indeed. That is all for now. And I will talk to you soon.